Hey folks, so I decided I'm going to start trying to do uh, uploads using my phone while I'm at work and everything. Try to up the amount of content that I put out. And you know, I'm generally for these videos, I just want to talk about random geek stuff and things that I'm hoping we all can agree on as good quality stuff. Now, for today I want to talk about, as everyone knows, I'm a huge Batman fan. You know? And like, I really want to talk about how I truly do believe that the big thing that affected a lot of the Batman comics for the longest time was Batman the 1989 movie and Batman the Animated Series. Now, uh, a lot of people don't really understand this, but Batman the uh, 1989 movie really did have a big effect on the animated series. That's why they had similar music in a lot of cases. It's why, like, everything that Tim Burton did right, Bruce Tim wanted to copy. And you could see it in the way the series was. I mean, but anyone who watched the 89 Batman, I'm not, that's not even my favorite Batman movie. I'm like, like, I'm actually more of, for me personally, I'd say my favorite Batman movie has to be uh, Batman... Uh, I'd say Dark Knight Rises, actually. I was going to say Batman Begins, but I think Dark Knight Rises. Or not Rises, but uh, The Dark Knight. Because Rises is just a horrible movie. Now, what made the, if you will, uh, the animated series so amazing and so well done is the fact that Bruce Tim understood one simple thing. And this can needs to be said for every creator. Like, uh, when you have something like that, you want to make sure that it is going to be something that the fans will appreciate. Like, it's something that the fans can, like, I recently purchased the entirety of Batman the Animated Series on Blu-ray plus digital. I can't wait to get it. I don't get it until, like, sometime over this next week. And one of the first things I'm going to do is plug the digital code in and watch the whole thing. No, I'm, I'm not going to keep it sealed because you know what? I didn't just pick up the entirety of Batman the Animated Series for me to just sit there and look at it. I want to watch it. Like, because it's been one of my favorite, like, adaptations of Batman. I mean, and, 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 and don't get me wrong. Like, the entire Bruce Tim, uh, if you will, animated universe, the DCAU, is amazing. Like, Bruce Tim, this is why you let fans make the product. Bruce Tim understood as a fan what he wanted. And so when you do these adaptations, look to the more faithful adaptations and the more, uh, you know, uh, if you will, uh, fan friendly adaptations like Batman the Animated Series because of the fact that when you look at it, you see what they did right and you can learn from it. See, the uh, reason why, like, take for instance the Dark Knight trilogy, one of the biggest drawbacks, and it's one of the things that I've stated for years. Those who are, you know, who have watched my channel since the beginning, all like five of you, no offense to you five, I, I, I really do love your face, all the love for your face, they under, like, they've heard me say this, the, that, uh, you know, the biggest problem that Christopher Nolan had, the biggest issue, the thing that could, that separates the Dark Knight trilogy from being truly legendary, all right? The, the, the thing that caused the whole thing to, to hiccup first was when Christopher Nolan said, this is the thing that hurt it the most. In a world where Superman exists, Batman cannot exist. Christopher Nolan needs to understand that Batman is bigger than him, and he doesn't know Batman. The whole point of Batman as a character is the fact that he can take on literal gods and win. And win. Practically every time. Hell, in a Superman Apocalypse, the animated movie where uh, it, basically they introduce Supergirl into the DC animated movie verse, the thing that I like about it is, is it's not Superman who originally gets Supergirl back from Darkseid. It's Batman. Batman pretty much told Darkseid, I will blow up your entire planet and I won't think twice about it. And when Doomsday called him on, or yeah, Doomsday, when Darkseid called him on it, what's the first thing Batman did? He gave him the password to activate all the uh, poor, uh, basically it's the, what they used to make the fire pits, the, the, the uh, jetting fire pits. Like, those of you who have only seen the movies, uh, Justice League, the dream sequence, the pits on Earth where you're seeing, like, the constant 
uh, if you will, almost like jet stream going up from the surface. The, 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 the orbs that do that. All right. Batman activated all of them. On Apocalypse. Dark Side's planet. He would have literally destroyed that entire planet and wouldn't have thought twice about it. And that's not a play Batman or uh, Superman could have made. That's not a play Wonder Woman could have made. No one else in the DC Universe could have made that play and been successful. Because that's what makes Batman that much of a better hero. I saw a video essay recently where a dude was talking about uh, how all the strength... The reason why Batman's such a solid superhero and one of the best is because of the fact that he was using the... Or not he is using, but the, the, the good writers that understood Batman, all of his villains attack Batman's weaknesses. Batman's a mere mortal. And his villains are so good because they go after those weaknesses. With Superman, it's not a matter of finding someone who can attack his weaknesses because Superman doesn't have a real weakness outside of kryptonite and magic. And really, it's not a weakness of magic. It's not a buff against magic, as it was pointed out in our live stream recently. And I, I think that's a good point. But what you're seeing with the, if you will, treatment of Batman in a lot of these different franchises, even in the comics. I mean, Om Ing, Tom King, doesn't he doesn't get the T or the K. That's too high T and too, like, just, like, actually good for him to earn those names. But uh, one of the things that I've really noticed about him is the fact that he really decided... To just take everything that the fans had wanted, tee that in, and then not give it to them. Slap them in the face. And then insult them online. And these are the people that have been in control of these characters for a long time. And Batman is one of the characters that are suffering the most. Batman has a large built-in fan base, like me. That all were raised, to tie this back to the original point about this being a big Batman the Animated Series video, to Batman the Animated Series. You know, that's what I... That right there, man, I remember... Oh, man, first time I saw that cartoon, I was like, what? I was already a bit of a Batman fan because the 89 movie, Batman Returns, things like that. And, you know, a little bit of the 66 Batman. I'm really not a big fan of that series. But I, to this day, it's like, oh, Adam West is dead, man. I'm not happy about that. I'm still not happy about that. I'm not happy about Christopher Reeves being dead either. If that man had lived another decade, he'd be walking right now. I'm just saying, they could have gotten him to play the Kingdom Come Superman in a movie. Legitimately. This is some bullshit, man. So they did get Brandon Ruth, and I, even though I don't watch the series anymore because CW decided to just, you know, shat all over the fans, but I've heard Brandon Ruth does do a good uh, Kingdom Come Superman. But, point being, that... The animated series, it just had everything right. And a lot of these, like, a lot of the best writers for Batman in the comics followed a lot of the leads, a lot of the, uh, if you will, story points that Bruce Timm had, you know, established in the animated series. If you want a good Batman movie or a Batman cartoon or whatever, you have to literally, you have to put in the fact that he's a detective first. He is the world's greatest detective. And we really haven't gotten, like, we've kind of gotten it in the movies a little bit, but not, like, the way he is in the comics. And, you know, that is a big core feat. Like, at, regardless, you could make Batman a weak character, completely broke, and all of his gadgets gone, and he's still the world's greatest detective because that's not, like, his strength, gadgets, and everything wasn't necessarily what made him such a good character. It's the fact that he's a Holmesian character without a lot of the problems. Well, he's got his own problems, but without the, like, drug use and things like that that you get from legitimate Sherlock Holmes. Secondly, you want to write a good Batman story, once again, follow the tips of the animated series. Make your villains as interesting as the hero. If you don't have an interesting villain, you don't have an interesting hero. Um, it reminds me of when I played Mass Effect 2. It's one of the best lines. Oh, I can't remember the, the Krogan that you pick up's name, but uh, one of the things he says to Shepard right off the bat is, if your enemies are weak, that means you are weak. That's what makes a, a good villain makes a good hero. You have to have, they go hand in hand. There's a reason why most actors, like Tim Curry, if I remember right, specifically stated the reason why he played villains so much is because they're more fun. 
They're always more fun. And so that's what you need for Batman. You need villains that are just, they, they, they that balance him out. Like, once again, attack his weakness. Make him be, uh, if you will, a bit more pushed out of his comfort zone and forced to pick up new tricks or find some way of working around his weakness to become a good, you know what I mean? Or to handle the situation. To be that, you know, uh, you get what I'm trying to say. It's, my words are going bleh. Three. Part of what makes a good Batman story is not just, you know, Batman and the villains. It's his supporting cast of people that he has around him. You need Tim to be able to go to Gordon, you know, at the bat signal, then have a conversation and Gordon go, here's what I know, so on and so forth. Gordon is one of those grounding characters that keep Batman from going too far. Same with Alfred, same with whoever's the current Robin. Right now, if I remember right, it's, it's Damian Wayne. Like, that's, these characters, you can't just have a superhero and not have the right foil for that character to keep him balanced. Like, the big complaint that a lot of people have about, like, Superman, for instance, is he's too powerful. It's hard to really relate to him because of how powerful he is. But that's the point of the character. He's supposed to be the, he, the big debate between like Goku and Superman who would win the whole point is, is Superman is the character that has no limits where Goku is the character that breaks through his limits to rise to the occasion that's the big difference but that still makes it very difficult for people to relate to Superman the way they can relate to Batman because Batman could be anybody Batman could be you Batman could be me Batman could be the dude down the street who cares? That's the point of Batman. He is someone who pushed himself to that peak of human physique. So if you want a character that is, you know, a Batman, if you will, you know, if you want a good Batman story, you have to rely on the fact that he's a human. He is just a really intelligent human who pushed himself to be at peak performance levels. Four, Batman is a tactician. Do not just show Batman jumping in and doing stuff. No, Batman's thing is, is he plans things out. You want to show that strength in Batman. And he can do it in subtle ways with how he has, like, the Bat family move and things like that. You can, you know, create that good story that shows him being the tactician without having to, like, go out of your way. Hey, this guy's a tactician. Back to your story. No, you don't have to do that. You just have to find a way to make the reader be really interested and, oh, okay, that makes sense, you know? Just no, a simple nod at it and people, the, the readers will enjoy it. Now, I think I'm on five. Batman does best when he does not kill. Don't, Batman is not the Punisher. Batman is not some edgelord, you know, uh, I guess the best way to put it, he's not some, like, anti-hero who's an edgelord and this, that, and other. He's not Frank Castle. He does not kill. He will put you in the hospital for six months, not even think twice about it, but he will not kill you. He will make sure you have time to think about what you did and why you're in the hospital. That's what makes him a good character, is the fact that he's not like the means justify, or the ends justify the means. No. If that was the case, he would have killed Joker years ago. Now, mind you, a lot of you who are huge Batman fans like myself would remember that the Joker was meant to die after his first appearance. But DC, the editor at the time, saw what he had and was like, no, 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 no. Let's keep this guy alive. Let's make him a reoccurring villain. And it... It's things like that that made him so good. And all of these things, all of these points, Batman the Animated Series, like, it just excellently did. Like, I can continue on. And these are all story points that Batman the Animated Series did. And did right. But all right, I think I've blathered on about Batman long enough. As, as always, like, subscribe, ring the bell, follow me here at uh, Nerdin' Over 30. And then, or, you know, subscribe and everything. Uh, follow me on the Twitter at Brainiac420. Follow me everywhere else at 
Bob Jones Comic Wars, and I shall catch you folks later.